Today we're making a hopped blueberry session mead. It's gonna be about six to seven percent and super crushable. Let's get started. So today's recipe is right up here. We are using about three gallons of water, roughly. Um, three pounds of blueberries that I have already blended, basically pur pureed. Um, and then we are using three, I think it's gonna be about 3.75 pounds of honey. It's gonna be blueberry blossom honey. That's what I have right here. Um, and the secondary, we're gonna to need to use priming sugar of some sort to bottle carbonate. We are gonna be adding some possible acid blend adjustments, AKA lemon juice and some other things. Now, before you go, oh my gosh, that's a lot of stuff uh, and you're already overwhelmed. This is a very simple recipe and theoretically it should be done we could turn this thing out in a month. That's the goal. We're gonna try and finish it in three weeks and then bottle carb it in about two, so about five weeks. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing ingredients. I've already sanitized everything. I use star sand to sanitize everything that I use and there's that. So I'm gonna be fermenting in this. This is a six gallon glass carboy. You could do this in a bucket, you can do this in any other way, but I want it to be visual, so that's what I'm doing here, and I wanna make sure that I have plenty of room. Enough talk, let's start mixing. Fun fact, I didn't mention the yeast I'm using. I am using the YLP005, which is a British ale yeast I've had for a while, I'm ready to use it, it'll be perfect for this. And I also didn't mention the hops. We're using the Galaxy hops, a very well-known hop in our brewing world. I ordered some, they're on the way. I don't currently have them, that's fine. Mixed in the honey, or honey and water. I'm gonna put it back in here. I'm gonna take and put my blueberries on top. We're gonna pitch our yeast. They are ready to go. And that's it. Oh, we gotta add some yeast nutrient. All right, now, I'm <laughs> throwing in my yeast. I literally lost half the packet, and I'll show my little fail right here. And they're ready to go. So we're gonna pitch them right in. Oh! I, I almost dropped it and then squeezed it and it went flying. So I lost half of it, some on my body. Um, I did add my DAP, which is dimonium phosphate. So that should help this ferment. Every mead needs nutrients. So dimonium phosphate does that. Our gravity reading, that means the possible ABV of this thing, given that it ferments through. Um, is at 1.040, which that is roughly in that realm of 5.2%, uh, I believe. I'll put the answer around here. Now I'm gonna put this back in. Assuming that I didn't lose all my yeast in the throwing of it, um, this will ferment. Let's see what happens. I'll put an airlock and a bung and all this stuff, but I got a mess to clean up. Let's come back after it ferments, see what happens. Well, it's been about 48 hours. And uh, nothing's really happening. I think we totally threw all of the viable yeast away. We're gonna switch over to the K1V1116 only because I don't have the other yeast. I'm gonna pitch this right in. And since I can spare this packet, I'm just gonna pour it all in. I wish I had kept our ale yeast, but that happened. So now, give us a quick little shake -a And it should start fermenting here and who knows? So this is fermenting currently. It's been about 24 to 48 hours. This is what it looks like when it's fermenting. You see there's things floating around. That's the blueberry and all the various stuff. We'll just leave it to be and come back when it's done fermenting. All right, we're back. It's been nine days since we started this. Um, I'll show you, I just racked it over. I noticed the fermentation had slowed. It started to clear. And so therefore I realized it's done. I have taken this little bag and basically put it over top of what I was racking and this collected some of the blueberry chunks. So we lost some to the sediment. There's a lot on the bottom there. Unfortunately, there's no good way to keep from losing that. So now let me tell you what this, well, first of all, the gravity started at 1.040 and we're currently setting at 1.000. So we're um, fermented out completely. Let's uh, talk about the tasting of it. So the honey character is um, sort of there. You get the, the definitely the blueberry um, in that bright floral side. The blueberries themselves have been fermented on, so a lot of the sugars are gone, but you get the essence. It's got a decent body. It's got some yeastiness to it, of course, but I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be good. When that blueberry, it does kind of build. 
Um, so now the next step, I've got my Galaxy Hops. We are going to take and use half of an ounce, which is 14 grams of this. And we're gonna put them into, this is like a hop cage essentially. And we're gonna dry hop in this bucket. Now when I dry hop, I could have dry hopped in this, but I don't want to, I'm gonna put them into here. So let me get half of an ounce of Galaxy Hops. All right, we have our half ounce of hops in this little cage. I literally am just gonna close the cage and then you can actually like close this thing and it kind of locks over. So now we have our hops. This will help to pull out, it'll be really easy. And hey, look, it sinks. Um, now they'll probably also disappear a little bit in the hops, but that's fine. The next step, we are going to let this sit for, I don't know how long, um, the hops might actually impart flavor really quickly. So I wanna probably taste test regularly. Bummer, I gotta do that. After we pull the hops off, we're gonna add, um, because I have to force carbonate, excuse me, I have to bottle carbonate this, I don't have a force carbonation method, we are going to add some non-fermentable sugar, aka erythritol in this case, you can add anything else um, you want to, and then we're gonna back, excuse me, we're going to uh, add priming sugar and bottle it. So let's come back after this is set with hops on it for a bit. All right, we're back, it's been a couple more days. Um, I'll explain what I've done. I basically took and added two cups of erythritol to this and I was trying to get it to the sweetness level that I desired so I felt like that was enough. I of course pulled the little hop uh, thing out and so that's right here and um, I've taken a gravity reading. The new gravity is 1.010. Erythritol is a non-fermentable sugar which means that the yeast will not be able to do anything with the sugar in there. It will stay sweet. So I'm gonna wait about 24 hours and come back after I feel like the, all the erythritol is actually dissolved. I'm kind of questioning if it all has dissolved, at which point we will take and bottle it. I have these carbonation drops. I will drop a carbonation drop into each bottle, fill the bottle. Um, this is basically just a little, this is priming sugar or dextrose and um, it's a pre-measured amount. So whenever I put it in there over time, it will dissolve into the brew. The yeast that are still active will eat it and create carbonation in the bottle, something we call bottle carving. So uh, I'm gonna put my lid back on this, come back in about 24 hours, and we're gonna go ahead and bottle it. All right, I've gone ahead and bottled everything. I put these little carbonation tablets in, like I talked about, into each bottle, and I have gone ahead and filled them and capped them. These should go ahead and bottle carbonate over the next two to three weeks. We're gonna come back and do a uh, taste test and see what it's like with some carbonation. The true final gravity is 1.010, so nothing changed, which is great. I think it tastes very good, and I'm excited to see what it tastes like here in a couple weeks. So let's scoot on to then. All right, it's been about two to three weeks since we went ahead and bottled this. We're now gonna, going to go ahead and uh, open it up, see if it carbonated, and get a taste test. So let's see if it carbonated. There we go. That hiss is a good sign. Let's go ahead and get a pour on it. Got a little carbonation. Yeah, there we go. That looks nice. It's not like, it's not extremely carbonated, but it's definitely a little carbonated. Um, I do think those little pre-measured drops were good. Um, it's not super carbonated, but that's okay. It smells great, you get the hop character. Ooh, that's refreshing. Yeah, the blueberry is um, super round and you kind of have this, a little bit of a jagged edge from the hops. Man, that is crisp. The carbonation is just right to me because it's carbonated, but it's not so carbonated that you're fighting against the other flavors. It has this really nice sweetness too. The erythritol is super helpful here. I'm a big fan of erythritol. Oh man, that's good. Now, um, I will say, if you wanna do this without using erythritol or a non-fermentable sugar, you can do a forced carbonation method, which would be using a kegging system. In that case, you could stabilize the mead, back sweeten with honey, and then force carbonate in the kegging system. I didn't have that, I don't have that. And so I just, I had to use the bottle carbonation method. Many of you might recreate this in the same way I did. So this has been really, really good. I have definitely found a new favorite for me. I love blueberry, I like hops. This is kind of like a beer. It's like a shandy of some sort, but with some hops in there. So I'm a huge fan of this. 
I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope you go make this. Here's the recipe. If you need to watch the process again, go backwards. It's pretty simple, but this thing is super good and I highly recommend you go and make it yourself. I will see you again in the future. I've got lots of other videos on low ABV meads. Go check those out and uh, hopefully I'll see you again soon. Cheers.